Good morning. Good morning. First, let me thank all of you for coming out on such a beautiful morning, given the last few days. We've been out doing a lot of things, so thank you so much. I want to thank Mayor Castle so much for your introduction, but also for your service and for your leadership. It's great to be here. I do look forward, after November, to really moving forward with your overall agenda here in San Miguel. And San Miguel is really a very exciting town, city. It's part of a region that's very exciting, very progressive. And it's going to be very uh, interesting, but very exciting and very, I think, inspirational to represent a new, newer part of now would be the 13th Assembly District, uh, thir excuse me, 13th Congressional District, once uh, November and the elections. And we get our votes out to the polls. So thank you again very much. Also, to Tim, where, where is Tim? I just want to thank you for opening this beautiful coffee house. I've been here many times and I love it. It's a wonderful place to gather. And I really appreciate uh, allowing all of the San Leandro residents to come to, and for being so accessible for us. Thank you. Again. Let me just uh, briefly tell you a little bit about myself. And, and I want to start with a story. I shared this with the mayor earlier. My mother is uh, 87 years old. I have a 91 year old aunt. I have a 100 year old aunt who just died a couple of weeks ago. So a lot of my time. I spent the senior citizens when I was talking at hospitals, emergency rooms, you, you know, all of the issues that we all have to do. So part of what I believe, you know, as part of my agenda overall, of course, is education, but of course, is preserving Medicare and Social Security and making sure that our seniors have the quality of life they so deserve. So my mother hangs with me quite a bit. And I told her I was coming to San Leandro this morning. It's a bit early. John Gooding knows my mother, Mildred Mask. And my mother said to me, she says, well, let me remind you of what I told you about San Leandro many years ago. I said, what? She said, when you were a little girl, this is an example of how communities evolve and an example of why I really love San Leandro. She says, when you were a little girl, I really wanted to live in San Leandro. She said, I wanted to buy a house in San Leandro. She said, and Folks told me, forget it. You know, the color of my skin. She said, there's no way you can buy a house in San Diego. My mother said, well, my husband is in the military. He's stationed in my ring. Why not buy a house? I have two little girls. I want to live in San Leandro. So she pushed the envelope, as my mother does. And uh, she found a realtor. She said, look, they're telling me that I could buy a house in San Leandro. I really want to raise my children in San Leandro. Well, at least one of the states And the realtor told her, the realtor told her, forget it, don't even try. You know, I don't want you to be embarrassed, and I don't want you to be angry. And so my mother, of course, at that point, realized what was going on. Fast forward to today. And she was so excited about San Leandro being put in the 13th Congressional District. Because she said, finally now, you know, I can hang out with you in San Leandro. <laughs> the city where I always wanted to live. <laughs> and I share that because that's an example of progress and change and, and what many of us and many of you have gone through just to have and allow for the American dream to be real for all in terms of home ownership and in terms of really living um, wherever one wants to live and not being discriminated against based on the color of their skin. So I really am very honored and pleased uh, to be able to campaign here and to get to know you and to get to learn more about the issues that you care about. And I want to be uh, there for you in terms of not only a champion for your issues, but also constituent service. I, by profession, am a social worker, psychiatric social worker. I attended Mills College and the University of California at Berkeley. I have my MSW. And 90% of my work in my district office is about advocacy and social work. We have so many people who are losing their jobs or who have lost their jobs, who need a place to stay, who need food to eat, who need help with their income tax return, a social security check got lost somewhere. And, and so part of what I believe is so important as a federal representative is to be your advocate with the federal government, because I know, again, going back to my mother and my aunts, I know how bureaucracies can be. 
And so my staff is a wonderful staff. They're accessible 24-7. I'm accessible 24-7. And we really do pride ourselves on advocacy and constituent services. Pete Stark is my brother, my friend. He mentored me so much. He has told me so much about family and he also is a person who I know you care about deeply. And so we're going to make sure as we campaign in San Leandro and make this transition that Pete and I are there side by side. He, he well, you know Pete Stark. He is phenomenal. He speaks truth. He's an advocate for our seniors and for health care reform. And he's an individual who we sit together on the floor and say, Pete, what do you think? How are you going to vote? I don't know. I think this is going to not be good for my community. I say, yeah, I don't think it's going to be good for mine either. So sometimes we're the only two or three, maybe with George Miller, who vote in a certain way. But that's because we know that oftentimes uh, the Tea Party brings proposals to the floor which uh, could, could put us in a trick bag sometimes. And so thank God for Pete Stark. Thank God that you're able to, you've been able to have for so many years. Of course, at the top of my agenda, <coughs> excuse me, I know the mayor's agenda, council members, economic development, job creation. This economy, we see glimmers of hope, but too many people are still unemployed. Uh, we see glimmers of hope, but too many people have lost their homes due to the poor collision crisis, and so we have a lot of work to do. And so much of what I want to do during this campaign is listen, first of all, to what your priorities are and try to figure out strategies and ways we can move forward with your priorities. Because I know education, jobs, public transportation, all economic development, waterfront, green jobs is a very important part of what we have to do and move forward in San Diego. Finally, let me just say, as the mayor said, I am a member of the Appropriations Committee. It's a tough committee. Um, there are very few women on that committee. I think they're pro in terms of Democrats, there may be maybe six women out of the committee of about 40. And it's a committee that is very powerful and very important because we determine our federal spending priorities. I'm on the subcommittee on Labor, Health, and Human Services, which is the subcommittee that actually funds our health care reform efforts. It funds Medicare and Social Security. community clinics and of course we have many challenges right now in terms of the priorities and where the Republicans are going and we have to maintain our priorities on that subcommittee because schools, community clinics, National Institute of Health, all of the major major domestic programs come through that subcommittee. I'm also on the subcommittee on financial services and appropriations and that's the subcommittee that, that funds the Small Business Administration, the Consumer Finance Agency, the Treasury Department, the IRS, all of our independent agencies, which is very, very critical. And so I'm able to use my, my leverage from those subcommittees to really enhance and promote my district's agenda. Because when agencies come to your subcommittee for their budget, you really have the opportunity to ask the hard questions and to demand some answers on behalf of your constituents. And so that's part of what we do on appropriations. Finally, uh, and I know earmarks are very controversial, but let me tell you one thing. I support earmarks, and I support earmarks, and, I, and part of what I have to do is educate the public about why I support oftentimes some things that are very, that are very controversial. First of all, 99% of earmarks are transparent, and are, are the right types of earmarks. The 1% of the scam artists and the, the folks who abuse the earmark process shouldn't drive the overall process. And I'm going to close by saying this. When I first was elected uh, to represent Castro Valley, Ashland, Cherry Land, Fairview, I looked at the new parts of the district. I said, wait a minute, what are the priorities? And in uh, Ashland and Cherry Land, there are no sidewalks for children to walk to school. And so I had an opportunity to fight for earmarks to build sidewalks in Ashland. And I'm very proud of what we've done with earmarks. I'm very proud of it. We just kicked off the Mule and State.
stations for the uh, fuel cell buses, AC Transit. Well, you know what? The very first fuel cell bus prototype was a gear market that got AC Transit. And now, gear, now fuel cell technology is beginning to become a, a very, very mainstay technology in terms of energy independence and, and uh, alternative sources of fuel. So I share that with you because I'm going to fight to try to get earmarks back because I want to be able to direct more federal funding to San Leandro. I think it's important that members of Congress direct money to what they, their constituents believe are their priorities. And so, <laughs> so when you hear me fighting against them when they say no ever, I'm going to say no, 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 no. I'm going to stand tall for my district because I want to be able to direct their tax dollars back to what their priorities are. I'll close now and just thank you again very much for coming out. I look forward to working with you and hopefully to campaigning with you. I love walking precincts. We'll be phone banking. We'll be doing all the new technology kind of campaign efforts too. But I still like the old-fashioned way of meeting people, knocking on doors, talking to people, and listening. So thank you again.